Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's video, I would like to talk about this particular type of plant known as Solangelina and a little bit of an introduction for this particular plant. It is sort of considered as a ferns ally and a lot of the mistaken factor where it is actually not a moss and it's not also a fern but characteristics is very much similar like a cloud moss. Now I must say that these particular ones are actually now in commercial nurseries where you can actually find them sold here and these are the variants, varied varieties that is available for purchase but however you must understand that this particular type of plant is actually a native plant here in Malaysia and easily about 300 to 500 over different species are available and yet to be properly catalogued and they are very challenging actually and one of the things that I have faced that after purchase and say about a month's time they do tend to die away and after many trials and error and experiences and I found that they do share certain characteristics and I would like to share that in this particular video. Now coming to the care and maintenance for this particular Selingelina, I must make a very high emphasis they require a very strong humidity factor in a, in a sense that if lack of high humidity they do tend to die and dry off and there's a classic case where they don't do so well when it comes to stress. My first experience is to think that it's actually something wrong with the potting medium and especially these are actually grown highland areas and the potting medium is basically coconut peat and what I was thinking that this particular plant is not responding well to the lowland climate due to the potting media and once I have changed the potting media the plant dies ever so quickly so I really can't figure out exactly what was the actual problem even if I do not change the potting medium they do succumb to dry and slowly die away and sort of like it's it's like an infection where the whole thing dies and there's nothing much you can actually do about it to reverse the condition so it was something that I initially thought that it is more of a goner case and and sometimes I'll just up the challenge of uh, purchasing it and trying on a different style and eventually even that it dies and, and I really can't figure out what is the actual problem and even and after many trials and error I actually found out the secret so I would like to share that kind of uh, experiences and the sort of like secrets here in this video and I hope that you can pick up and uh, some pointers so that you can figure out on the planting uh, idea of what went wrong and the ability to keep them more and grow your collection with these Selingela species. So my tip number one is to identify the type of Selingelina. The factor here is that all look alike but their characteristics are actually very different. This particular one is very much suitable for the terrarium setup. In a way to say that they require high humidity and in a control constant level. That means to say that they only will thrive in a condition where it is somewhere nearby a water body where there's also a have enough sunlight for it to thrive to photosynthesis at the same time the humidity is constant something like a drain side or a water body or a uh, waterfall or water features this is very important because any changes of the weather something like if it's uh, set in a place where there's a very dry and arid condition in a certain time of period of time where it gets very hot and dry this will actually dry up and wither away also they don't do so well in a very cold uh, or very wet how do, you, how do I mention this very shaded environment and is wet and they will actually will rot also so in a way there is a sort of like a goldilock balance between enough light but not too bright enough humidity but not too wet and in that kind of condition these thrive and 
to find that condition in most cases especially in the garden condition can be challenging because uh, nothing in my garden is actually constant hence i found that it works best when placed in a terrarium setup so to experiment to find out whether it is true i have placed this particular selangelina in a terrarium setup and also even then there are certain criteria that need to be followed but in a context of lifespan these last longer and grow and thrive in a terrarium setup in comparison to a outdoor setting so to figure it out you have to have some experimentation on this and this particular one to be identified that these are the terrarium types of selangelina now i want to make mention about some unique characteristics of selangelina if you were to look at this particular plant and you will notice that there's some kind of whiskers like growth that appearing on each portion of the leaf petiole or the leaf structure you may be able to say it and if you were to see that they in every section these roots are actually appearing to coming out of it now this is one thing that i want to mention is that each individual leaf as such as this is actually a unit by itself it means say is that they can be sort of like a parent colony plant and it's constantly extending and growing sort of like uh, photos or philodendron kind of uh, features so this is very important to know that they this particular plant do not need a tall thick potting medium in a way to say is actually a total waste because the roots doesn't really go so deep they are very much surface plant so if you want to grow them and let's say your garden condition is actually suitable for this particular plant grow them in a way that they are in a flat type of potting rather than deep potting medium and one of the plus points of this is that if you were to grow this in a terrarium you will actually find these roots are very much networking and grow more vigorously against terrarium surface especially the glass or anything that is on that surface these particular roots seems to thrive in that kind of condition so this is one of the things that you need to take note of that you don't really need to have a deep potting uh, medium in a way that you find a tall pot because the roots do not go that deep and now i have mentioned about different types of selangelina this particular one however also cultivated as an ornament plant and i find that this is actually outdoor hardy in a way that it can actually withstand the lowland climate together with the rain and uh, some level of bright sunlight and somehow this seems to thrive in that kind of condition i have seen this grown as such as uh, alternative to grass and as sort of like an ornament position where it grows as a filler plant in between pots where you can actually grow them uh, on on the surface where it grows very well on a slope or even on upon these pebbles some sort of that kind of thing however this requires some sort of a kind of microclimate or something like a habitat where it all grows together in a shaded environment somewhere above a tree fern or an under a palm tree or a, even under a heavy canopy it doesn't really do so much or so well in you know open direct bright sunlight but however in comparison to the earlier type of selangelina this particular one the big leaf type seems to weather the storm and a little bit more hardier compared to the sensitive types now i have noticed that the colors may change due to the factor of how much light it receives i find that it may turn to be a little bit more orangey to lime when you receive a lot of light and more towards a darker green and even sometimes in a iridescent blue when you receive just an adequate to more on a shadier bright setting so this is one of the things that i find that the uniqueness of selangelina is that uh, under a microscope we can actually find that these leaves appears to be some sort of like folds and when it's sort of like a folded kind of a paper kind of thing <laughs> it's not a paper actually but somehow if you can imagine it that in those folds the reflected light that comes out of it gives this kind of different colors of those reflections 
Now, I must say that one of the unique factors is that once this particular plant has found its home and is thriving, there's nothing much to be worried about. You can actually consider that it has found itself in a stable environment that it can grow very well. Here in this setup, I'm actually growing them in a hydroponic setting where it's actually growing alongside with apicias and begonias. And I find that they somehow requires to be in a constant moist environment where it doesn't dry out and one of the things that i find that what succumbs them to totally dry out is when they do not get enough watering on them so this is very much closer to an aquatic kind of type of plant where watering is constantly needed so let's say if you are going for a long holiday trip and you forgot to water <laughs> this is not the plant for you to cultivate in your garden space I also must say that in comparison to this is another particular type known as peacock fern and also somehow also identified as blue fern. They are fall into more on the terrarium type rather than a hardy type. So I find that except for this particular one which seems to do fairly well in this kind of setting which they don't die out easily uh, in comparison to the Selangelinia window AI, which I find that this particular one is much more easier than the peacock fern. Now I want to show to you in the condition of the same type of Selangelina which I have actually cultivated in my indoor space where I get reflected light not so not so uh, hot and sort of like not so humid but in a way adequate to handle the weather very well and I find that this particular one seems to die away within two to three months time so I find that lacking high humidity can even cause them to die so this is the thing that i want to make mention that even though you can actually grow them together with uh, philodendron or monstera thinking that they have enough humidity but this particular plant do not do so well even though it has adequate humidity in a indoor setting the pictures here, if you were to notice, that uh, these are the types of Selangelinas that I managed to cultivate uh, in my garden setting, more an experimental factor where it did well for some time. Uh, the, the first one seems to last about a few years and then suddenly the whole thing died. So this, I can actually tell you that Selangelina is not forgivable. So if something goes wrong, they don't seem to recover from stress easily. And the other one also seems to does the same thing that it was growing fine for a few months and then suddenly I noticed that uh, at the side of the stem the main stem the whole thing started to rot so I was not able to save it so this is one of the things that I find that when something goes wrong and if they're stressed out they don't show the immediate stress factor they seems to die immediately and there's nothing much you can do to save it now all those were the ones that actually were uh, more on the context of outdoor setting where it's open to rain and sun and the more on the open garden space now what i have managed to do here is that i've actually placed them in a terrarium setting and i find that they are very much stable and able to thrive in this kind of condition one of the factors that i want to make mention here is that they still do require some element of sunlight to be on them and of course the I also see that some are grown using a grow light but this is not so sophisticated type we actually just use a kind of a container which is very much clear and easy and also I have used the types where the top cover is also clear and occasionally I will open it to let the air flow to go in uh, otherwise the whole thing will be more uh, fall into the humidity factor and the whole thing will con uh, const in a condensation will take place and it's quite heavy on that so uh, off and on I'll just open it up and let some air to go in and filter it out and that's about that but however I find that uh, in this setup one of the plus point here is that I don't really have to worry about watering and there is no rot taking place and the best part here is that they tend to be stabilized and healthy growing uh, also in another factor of trial and error i find that 
overly growing them in a small container can have a reverse effect where the whole thing can actually rot so just keeping them enough for them to grow but not to overgrow so after experimenting and i find that they are happy with it and they start to grow i also use a little bit more of moss and a little bit of few of types different types of ferns and no one on experimenting and figuring it out and i find that they're actually very happy so then this is basically more as i mentioned is the uh, experimental uh, the main key factor is to have a little bit at least about an inch or half inch of a drainage place where i use a lot of pebbles at the bottom and just enough to see the level of water underneath it so once that water has evaporated i'll just fill it up just half of that so just to keep the whole place it has more on has this water cycle kind of thing especially when it comes to terrarium now i will do a diy and more on a clear instruction of how to do a terrarium in this kind of setup but basically here if i were to mention to you the element of medium that has been used is actually <clears throat> pebbles at the bottom followed by kind of a, a flim kind of thing and actually use a kind of a uh, cotton fiber to hold whatever of the top medium from falling down into the pebbles and the other le top uh, the top fat factor of what was it the first level is more of compost followed by sand and just tucking in all the silangelinas around the terrarium and a little bit of deco with uh, moss and ferns and that's about that and with the bright light indirect light and these particular terrariums and plants within it have been thriving very well in my garden space now i've come to the end of my video and if you have any questions regarding this particular type of plant this lingelina do put them in a the comment below and i'll try my best to answer based on my experience and my knowledge and if you can please click like and subscribe and support my channel and hear from you soon have a nice day. Take care and bye.